Hello. Bruno, how's France? Did you collect any new bullet holes? I know how you love to be shot at. I'm teasing. I'm glad you're not damaged. Did you at least encounter an exotic temptress or two? Really? What was her name? What do you mean you don't remember? That's horrible. Of course, I'm famished. Are you buying? Then it's a date. Let's say Maximilian's in half an hour. Ciao. I'm not very happy, you know. It's not like I thought it would be. I never promised it would be as exhilarating as your former trade, only that it would keep you out of jail and make it easier to sleep at night. More wine. You're the first female operative Unity has ever employed. The committee is old-fashioned. They need time to get used to the idea of a woman in this line of work. I know all that, but at this rate I'll be a bloody grandmother before they give me a real assignment. You can always go back to burglary and pickpocketing if you can't live without excitement. Damn it, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to be challenged. I'm sick of wiretaps. I'm sick of eavesdropping on boring strangers who may or may not pose some trivial threat to international security because they forgot to declare a ham sandwich at Heathrow. I don't have the patience for it. It's not what I'm good at. It's never fun paying one's dues, but we all have to endure a bit of frustration and tedium now and then. It builds character. I think I've paid my bloody dues. Is that what you think? God knows I loathe sermons, but I'll tell you right now that you'll never stop paying your dues. Not ever. I'm sorry you're not happy, but you might as well get used to it. Nobody owes you a damn thing. You make it sound like I'm some spoiled child. I'm not asking to be coddled. I just want a chance to prove myself. You're right. I know it's been hard for you, but I'm confident you'll get your chance. All the petty politics in the world won't hold you back. They've done an outstanding job so far, haven't they? You see? What did I tell you? Probably just one of the committee members needing a babysitter on short notice. Ye of little faith, I'll see you there. Why don't we go together? I have an errand to attend to first. You go on ahead. Good afternoon, Miss Archer. They're expecting you in the briefing room. Wrong way, Miss Archer. Agent Archer, how thoughtful of you to join us. I hope we aren't inconveniencing you too awfully with matters of international security. Not at all, Mr. Smith, but it's charming of you to mention it. It is not my ambition to be charming. Well, that's fortunate. I would advise you to watch your tongue. Well, if it isn't the inimitable Agent Lowry... Sorry I'm late, Smithy. You're looking dapper today. Spare me the disingenuous flattery, old boy. It doesn't suit you. I was being sincere. It was the one polite thing I could think to say. You're still upset with me, aren't you? I assure you I have nothing against you personally. You've served us well for many years, but perhaps too many. I firmly believe it is in Unity's best interest that you retire from field operations and I will continue to campaign to that end until you accept an administrative position. I'm not upset with you, Smithy. I just don't like you. I do understand your concern, but just because you're too old for the field doesn't mean that I am. Until I'm declared unfit for duty, I will continue to prove it. I retired voluntarily. Of course you did. Perhaps we should dispense with the pleasantries and get down to brass tacks. Fine. Lights, please. We lost another agent this afternoon, bringing the total to seven operatives in ten days. It is our firm belief that someone is systematically eliminating our undercover agents. 
which leads us to believe that the clandestine operations section has been compromised. It seems we have a traitor in our midst. Do you suspect anyone? We suspect everyone. Seven operatives. That's over half the active list. Why won't we inform sooner? You're being informed now. This situation has unfolded rather abruptly. The assassin left a lily, a regal finale to be precise, on or near the corpse of each victim. Mean anything to either of you? Volkov. Who? Dmitri Volkov. The regal finale is his calling card. The name's familiar. What do we know about him? He's a right bastard. Anything more specific? Just what's in his file? Born in Kamchatka in 1921. Distinguished himself as an academic prodigy and master chess player by the age of eight, by which time he'd also earned notoriety for refining various torture techniques on neighbors' pets. It seems he joined the NKVD in 37 and served as some sort of disciplinarian in a gulag near Kiev. His whereabouts during the war are unknown except for a brief mention in 43, when he was spotted by an OSS officer at Leningrad interrogating prisoners of war who would later disappear without a trace. Ah, yes, I remember this fellow. We've had dealings with him before. Sometime after the war, he emerged again, this time in the employ of Smirsch. He is personally credited with well over a thousand executions, spies and Soviet dissidents for the most part. In 61, a failed assassination attempt left him without an eye. He was shot in the face at close range by one of our finest agents. You flatter me, but I shouldn't have missed. He escaped by throwing himself off a 70-foot cliff into an icy river. It was presumed that he survived, as no body was ever recovered. In fact, rumor has it, he's currently working for an organization calling itself Harm as Director of Executive Action. I don't have to tell you what that means. What do we know about Harm? Unfortunately, there's very little about them in our files. Well, despite the obvious risks, we still have a job to do. In this case, a very important one. Wet work. Precisely. And after this recent catastrophe, the two of you are our only available assets. To be perfectly frank, Agent Archer, you're only getting this assignment because we've no other choice. Matters of such delicacy aren't really the sort of thing we would usually entrust to a woman. Emotional inconstancy and assassination do not make especially good bedfellows, if you take my meaning. Implicitly. But you shouldn't be ashamed. Administration is a perfectly noble career. I don't think I like your tone. I believe what Agent Archer means to say, Smithy, is that she appreciates the chance, however fortuitous, to demonstrate her abilities as an operative, and that she'll endeavor not to disappoint the committee. Isn't that so, Agent Archer? Aye. That's not what it sounded like to me. Enough of this. Time is of the essence. Stop by the toy shop before you go. They have some new gizmos you might find useful. Don't dally too long, though. Your flight leaves at 6 p.m. Where are we going? Morocco. Agent Archer, uh, what does harm stand for? I haven't figured that out yet. See if you can't find out. And be careful, both of you.
We strongly advise that you go through the training course before embarking on your first mission. There are many nuances and features you may overlook otherwise. If you prefer to skip training, just head to the exit. I won't stop you, but don't expect any sympathy from me if you run into trouble out there. Intelligence has discovered that the American ambassador to West Germany, Morris Monroe, is marked for execution by an organization calling itself H-A-R-M, or HARM. It is imperative that Monroe survive the attack. Be warned, though, that the ambassador is extremely nearsighted and almost deaf, so you won't be able to rely on him to realize that he is in danger. You will be positioned in a residential building across the street from the hotel. Your job is to pick off the assassins before they liquidate Monroe. So, are you enjoying yourself yet? Immensely. Sure you're not bored? I've waited nearly four years for this chance. I think I can endure another half hour. Good girl. You're growing up. What do you make of all that talk of a traitor? It wouldn't be the first time we've had leaky plumbing. Still, it's disquieting to say the least. It's happened before? Once. A few years ago, we lost several undercover operatives in Istanbul. It turned out they'd been compromised by their chief's very own administrative assistant. He'd sold us out for a measly 50 quid. 50 quid? Astonishing, isn't it? Trading men's lives for such a pittance. But spies are rarely well compensated for their treason. I wouldn't be surprised if this new mole is equally underpaid. Well, I hope when they catch the bastard, they put a bullet right between his eyes. And maybe a boot of his arse for good measure. You sound ready to volunteer. I'm dangerous when I'm upset. That's why you're always in trouble. All right. Munro's headed for the cafe. Watch for him on the second floor patio, coming from the left. What about the targets? Not sure yet. Pardon me. Uh, do you have the time? No, sir, I do not have a dime, and I don't have much use for beggars. Not a dime. The time. Don't get snippy with me or I'll have you arrested. Are you deaf? How dare you threaten me? Oh, never mind. Coward! Would you like me to call out the targets for you? That would be lovely. To your left, on the far balcony. I want to go home. That would be lovely. On the roof to your left. I want to go home. 
But we've only been here for two days. To your left, on the far balcony. I don't like it here. On your left, coming out the door on the far balcony. down the street on your left. Good From down the street on your left. Derelict. There must be a hole in my pocket. He plans to marry the American girl. You mean the girl who refuses to wear shoes? Yes, sir. I wonder if all American girls did buy shoes. She seems very strange. America is a strange country. She may be crazy, but she is attractive. Ah, but you're invariably attracted to crazy women. I'm in position. Good. He's almost there. Here he comes. Get ready. On your left. Coming around the building.
You just lost yourself a customer. This guy is too much. Second story window, far right. Not again! Second Where story window. Where are you, you pesky little dime? Second story window, far I right. Better find it quickly before the thieves swoop in like vultures. On your right, coming around the building. On your right, coming around the building. Second story window, on your left. Second story window, on your left. Second story window, far right. Excellent shooting. You don't have to tell me that, I was standing right here. A little humility might suit you. I'm teasing. We make a pretty good team. Damn, they must have spotted you. There's a group of thugs heading your way. How many? Looks like six of them. Can you handle it? Of course I can. I'll meet you at the hotel in an hour. All right. Take care of yourself. First, I'm going to take care of some evildoers. Keep your men out of sight. We don't want to spoil our trap, do we? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean, yes to the first part and no to the second part, sir. Shut up. Just do as I say, you idiot. You look like you need a monkey. Excuse me. I have a very fine monkey for you. Only $20 American. 